The old and well-loved King Edward VII has died, and the First World War is on the horizon. Let's find out how our current royal family became known as the Windsors, as told through movies and TV. We first have George V in The Lost Prince. This two-episode television drama was made in 2003 and tells us two different stories simultaneously. One is about the youngest son of George V, Prince John, and his relationship with his family and his nanny. At the same time, there is quite a bit of time spent on the political events going on at the time, such as the fall of the House of Romanov and World War I. Ratings. I mean, you probably already guessed it, but this is a sad movie. We have family rejection, the breakdown of family ties, and a world war. That said, there is a lot of heart in it, and it was worth the watch. Even though there are a lot of different characters and events going on, it never gets overly complicated or confusing. I've read some reviewers thought it was a bit slow, which, yeah, I could see that, especially if you're used to more fast-paced action, but personally, I thought the pacing was fine. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. No sex and nudity, and only the smallest bit of gore from seeing wounded soldiers from the battlefield. Altogether, the series is three hours long, rated 13+. Plus. Next up is Edward VIII in Edward and Mrs. Simpson, which is a television series from 1978. There are a lot of options for this scandalous romance. If you want, please go check out my comparison video. I'm going with this option because it doesn't just tell Edward VIII's story. We also spend a lot of time with the rest of the royal family, the prime ministers, and other figures in history. That will be in quite a few of the movies and shows following this. Ratings. I was worried the political bits would get boring, but honestly, I ended up just as invested in what was happening with the prime minister and the lawyers as I was with the king and Wallace. I can't say it's in my top 10 of shows in this marathon, but it does a great job of showing us how the times were swiftly changing, and I certainly wouldn't mind watching it again. Sex and nudity, violence, and gore. No sex and nudity, or even that much romance. No violence either, unless you count the shooting of a lot of innocent African animals. It's seven episodes, about 50 minutes each, and rated for all ages. Our next monarch is George VI in The King's Speech. I did have a hard time deciding on which option to go with for this marathon. If you're curious about the other option for George VI, please go check out my comparison video. This award-winning movie from 2010 is primarily about George VI, or Bertie, becoming king and the relationship between him and his speech therapist. A lot of it takes place during the same time as the last show we watched, but the point of view is very different. It also leads up right to the start of World War II. Ratings. I can't say enough nice things about this movie. It stars Colin Firth, Helena Bonham Carter, and Jeffrey Rush. It won Academy Awards for Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay, among others. It's in my top 10 of favorite movies and shows of all time. If you have not seen it, please go now. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. Nothing of either. However, this is not for children due to the very large amount of profanity. Unless you're cool with that. Your kid, you make that decision. It's 119 minutes long, rated 17+. Plus. Finally, the final show in our marathon, you probably guessed it, The Crown. This six-season series started in 2016 and just ended this month in 2023. It spans almost six decades, showing us most of the entire reign of Elizabeth II. It begins shortly before the then Princess Elizabeth's marriage and ends with the 2005 wedding of the then Prince Charles. Ratings. I have heard and read so many debates on the portrayal of a lot of these people who, uh, unlike our previous movies and shows, are still alive to comment on its accuracy. Putting all of that aside for the sake of what this is, a fictional drama based on historical events, I loved it. I thought it did a fantastic job of walking us through not one life story, but many. The talent shown in this from acting to production design was fantastic. I very rarely got any crochet done while this was on. For me, this was the perfect ending to my current monarchy marathon journey. Sex and nudity, violence and gore. 
Nothing super graphic or violent enough to make me want to hide under a pillow, but still not for kids. It's rated TV mature for language, nudity, sex, smoking, and violence. I'll finish off this video with a couple honorable mentions for Queen Elizabeth II. The first is A Royal Night Out. Made in 2015, this takes place on VE Day in 1945. It's about Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret being allowed to go out for the very first time and enjoy the celebration with everyone else. This, of course, turns into a whirlwind adventure of getting lost, meeting some new friends, and learning a little bit about the people. Although reportedly completely fictional, it's certainly lighthearted, fun, and enjoyable. 97 minutes, rated 13+. Plus. Also, The Queen. This is a 2006 biographical film that depicts the events after the death of Princess Diana, focusing on how the royal family reacted and how the press and public responded. Masterful performances by Helen Mirren as Elizabeth II and Michael Sheen as Tony Blair. 103 minutes long, rated 17 plus. Both of the events in these movies are also shown in The Crown, but I still think they're worth the watch. That's it. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. As always, thank you and happy watching.